beast, didn't they? Chuff to bits. The smallest little thorn back there. I'm just kind of sure I'm not leaving the rod over the side. And his eyes. He's got amazing eyes. Doggy in the boot. Called him mullet. There's a bit of weight to that, you know. And that's what we want, don't we? We don't want the same same all the time. We want something different, a good old show. Hello and welcome to the channel. On this cold, wet, blustery January afternoon. But it's Friday, almost the weekend. <laughs> I've got no rods in the water and I'm not fishing. What are you up to, Mark, you crank? Um, well, I'm waiting for the tide. There's no water in front of me. <laughs> I'm at Pool Harbour fishing for flounder and the plan. Well, I want to catch the earliest part of the flood. I want to catch it as the water comes across uh, all of the mud flats that are out in front of me now. I literally, the, the flounder will be following the water line up. As soon as their backs are covered, they'll be following it in. And what are we using? I'm using 12 foot Shakespeare rods with fixed ball reels. We've got braided line, ultimate lightness, um, and, and just really light, cheap rods, really fiberglassy, tippy, show every little tiny jiggle that you get on the end of the rod. Uh, I'm just keeping an eye, I'll, I'll give you a pan around in a minute and you can have a look. Um, but yeah, so what are we using? So today is predominantly a testing session. So I have actually got a competition day after tomorrow in Limington. Not too much different to this, but I want to try some, some rigs out. So Dean at Tommy's Bait and Tackle has supplied me with a reference rig that he's proven in these conditions and it's all about pop-ups so the thinking here so there, there is a lot of crab activity even at this time of year and you don't want crabs just decimating your bait but also flounder his eyes are on top so he's constantly looking up and forward and I just think presenting a worm that's flowing just off the bottom on the end of a trace doing all of gets their attention. Some people go for bejazzles, beads, sequins, spinners, all of that. Today we're going to try pop-ups. So I've got a selection of different variations of two hook pop-ups and I've got for the competition testing I've got three hook flappers but fishing two up and one below the weight. So two above the weight and one below the weight with a variation of with and without pop-ups. So that's what we're doing today. Kind invitation um, from Dorset Angling Live. Um, Shane, stunning bloke, good chap. He come down here last night, absolutely smashed out of the park. I think he had six in his first half out. Same conditions, but a different day. We know two days don't fish the same, but these are as close to the conditions that fish well last night on the exact same mark. So if I don't catch, it's all me. Um, <laughs> what we're we using? Ragworm baits, got fresh ragworm. Um, like I say, two and three hook flappers with and without pop-ups. I'm using, I think they're three and a half or four ounce pyramid weights. Don't need heavy gear here. You don't even need to cast that far. What we do now is I'll give you a quick spin round. You can have a look where we're at. I've got my hat on because it's not nice out. That's what we're dealing with at the moment. There's one of the rods. Shane's coming down in a bit, so I've got a rod rigged up for him there. Not trying to own the area, but I want to fish. We want to fish next to each other and have a chat. And that's what we're dealing with. There's someone out there walking their dog. <laughs> so there's no water yet. And there's someone out there walking their dog. Just past my rod. So my view is when that rock in front of me, when the water level starts rising up that rock, that'll be time to put a bait out. I'm going to have to be careful today with the water on the lens because it's a very fine rain and also the spray coming off of the sea. Um, probably going to have to hide the camera inside the van from time to time. But the beauty of here, for those people, I sometimes get messages saying, oh, I sometimes get messages asking, is there anywhere I can fish where I can park really close? Because either I can't walk very far, got arthritis, you know, I just can't do like Chesil Beach trudges and, and long walks to Marks. Is there anywhere you would suggest? Well, Pool Harbour's a perfect place for that. You can park right next to your rods. And whether, when the weather turns bad, you can sit in your car or van. It's perfect for it. 
Anyone that's struggling for getting to a location, um, highly recommend Paul Harbour. <sighs> Must be crackers. <laughs> it's blowing 30 to 40 mile an hour winds. Um, two rods are out and I'm fishing. So, head torch time, night time, blustery winds, January, flounder fishing. It's not perfect, is it? It's far from perfect. See what we can get, eh? Proper hard work for me tonight. The flounder are elusive. So, Shane's had a couple, and it's almost like, I'm, I'm almost like a jinx, I think, at the moment. <laughs> I've, I've had two little schoolie bass, and what looked like a flounder jingle earlier. Um, yeah, fishing the same rigs, same baits, same place. <laughs> There's no excuses. I'm rubbish. <laughs> but yeah, see if we can winkle something out. Camera's in the van now because it's blowing a hoolie and every now and then it pulls down with rain. So I nearly got caught out, nearly trashed the camera earlier. But yeah, see if we can get something out, eh? I'm making a right meal of this. So it's just had bites on both rods. I've had a rattle on both. Still not, still not going crazy. Yeah. It's not actually that cold. I think I might have this left rod in because I think I might have a very small bass on that. By the way, that's playing. Or at least check the bait. Doesn't feel like I've got anything. <sighs> Something's certainly been at the bait. Right, let's get that baited up. Oh, and the right rod's going crackers as well. That was a good bite. Oh, and the left rod's going crackers as well. <laughs> They're both going crackers. <laughs> both rods are going mental. <laughs> That left rod, I think I might just let this one stand. <laughs> Spoiled for choice. Let's have a look, see what's going on with this one. Well, I might just get them picked off by um, little schooly bass. Don't know, is the honest answer. Let's have this one in anyway. It might just be a little schooly bass. Yeah, something small on there, I think. It's just small, whatever it is. I think it might be a little schooly bass, mate. Oh, maybe not. It's woken up, whatever it is. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Nice. Cheers, buddy. And that's on your rig, Shane. There we go. <laughs> Eventually, one flounder. <laughs> so there he is. One pool flounder. He's been hard work. Right, what I have got now is my tool for unhooking flounders. Let's reposition the camera and we'll, uh, we'll have a look at how you actually unhook a deep hooked flounder, because this one is fairly deep hooked. Okay, so this is a fairly small flounder. We just got to have a look to see if we can see where the hook is. All right, but let's just have a quick look. See if we can see where the hook is. What we don't want to do is disturb the gills in any way. You can turn the hook. There 
there it is. There it is. Still not touched his gills or his gill rakers. I mean, we should. Be able to wrap the line around the hook like that and pull it free so that's what you're trying to achieve you're trying to get the hook out without damaging the fish so that then you can pass it back through and the hook comes clear and it's all using that tool that's just got a very tight loop on the end that's what you try to do <laughs> and there's your fish look blood free no blood in it we'll get them in the bucket so that fish that we just caught and done the unhooking on, that's, um, that's Shane's rig, so he's local, local boy, fishes here a lot. This is his rig, and it is a short snood three hook flapper. And they love it. There we go. So I'm gonna be looking at, I'm gonna nick this one. <laughs> he's lent me it, but I'm gonna nick it. <laughs> you don't know that yet. I'm gonna nick it, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna make my own version of it. But that's what's just done the business. No pop-ups. I'm pop-upping away on the other rod, albeit there has been some bites on the other rod. Um, but that's Shane's rig. Dorset Fishing Live. Check out his channel. Because his stuff works. Look at that. What a cracker. Right. Let's get bunks day. See if we can catch another. Well, I've had interest on both rods. I'm not 100% sure. In fact, I'm pretty sure I am on that one now. Cunham's just had an absolute stonker of a flounder. Cracking size. Oh, no. That left rod is definitely going, this one. I'm not too sure on. Just had bites on both rods, the slack line bite on that one. Just come back. Yep, definitely slack line. <laughs> oh yeah, look at that. Yes boy! <laughs> oh yeah, go on, Mark. That's not bad either, is it? That's on the pop-up. Cheers, buddy. Oh, that's on your rig this time, Mark. Yeah, it's on mine. At least you're there at work. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and there we go. Proof that the pop ups do work. There's a big 25mm pop up, and there's the flounder. I'm chuffed with that. That's my rig that I've just caught that one on. <laughs> it's a lovely looking fish. Look at that. Let's have a look. Yeah, strong fish as well. It's not a big one, that one. It's only small. But look at that, with the pop-up on it. Let's have a look at the, for the camera. So you can see the weight with the earth clip and the flounder and the pop-up. Ideal. It works. <laughs> I was starting to doubt myself, like you do. People around you are catching, you're like, well, what's, what's wrong with my kit? What's wrong with my bait? Just clean my hands. You start to doubt yourself. So you think, oh, what's wrong with my kit? What's wrong with my bait? And then all of a sudden, there it is. Lovely. Oh, I'm chuffed that that worked. Right. But we have got another deep hooked fish. Uh, they're coming in thick and fast. So Shane's just caught one, Callum's just caught a stonker. I've just had one. I think I might even have one on the other rod. Um, it's gone chicken oriental. Oh yeah, nice fish. He's all right. There's two. There's two, two bass. <laughs> There you go, well done. I need to bait this up and get this back out. My little faithful pop-up rig, I can say that now, genuinely. Get a ragworm on it. A, rag a ragging worm, it's just tried to bite me. Right. 
Um, sw switching on to some bigger ragworm now. Um, we were fishing smaller ragworm for obviously for the flounder, but there seems to be quite a lot of bass about. And where the water's all churned up, putting some big ragworm baits on now. Still using the pop up. Pop up will work just as well for the bass. See if we can get something substantial, decent size. I'm mad keen that the pop-ups work. I did like that. Yeah, big size of that. Does that just come in now? Yeah. I should. I'll put it on camera. Hey, look. I got, I got one of them for you. Look. The old like. Oh yeah. <laughs> Hey. <laughs> so we've gone. We have gone the full range of sizes. Look at the size of that. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Look at the weenie one. The little tiny weenie one. Yeah. <laughs> and unhook nicely, he's going to live to fight another day, get bigger and stronger and come back for more. Yeah, wow, that's tiny, isn't it? Still getting beaten up by the weather. It's gusting up the 40 mile an hour winds, but we're catching, which is exciting. As always, we love it. Um, I did start to think there was something wrong with my kit. <laughs> all me, all my aftershave, <laughs> all my bait, all my rigs, all my weights, all my rod. You doubt yourself, don't you? People catching around you and you're not. And then all of a sudden it kicks in and you start catching. So, yeah. Paul Harbour. Bass and flounder. So we're into the ebb now. Tide's just turned. So I've fresh baited. Looks really bassy out there. There's little crests. I don't know if you can just about see in the background. But there's white crests on the waves. Um, wind's picked up again. It's gusting. It's got to be 35, 40 mile an hour now. Um, and we're getting lots of little jangling type bites, so they must be school bass. But where there's school bass, there's bigger bass. And there are some clonking bass come out from around there. Um, still chasing flounder, rigged up, baited up, still going. Got pop-ups on one rod, got three hooks, short snood flapper on the other rod. And pretty much in amongst it. So we've had loads of flounders between us. Got a bucket full of them in a minute. We'll go through them all. Um, teeny ones, big ones, school bass. Bigger bass, still school bass, not 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 of any substantial size tonight. But yeah, so I think it was Chris was here earlier on. I think it was his name was Chris. Forgive me if that's wrong. Um, he's packed up and gone. Um, we still got Callum and Shane um, and myself. So we're still here doing the stuff, still fishing, beavering away. Um, Going to give it about another hour, I think, an hour of the ebb before I knock it on the head. And then I think there's the um, the golden arches are calling. Um, I haven't had my tea yet. Should always have your tea. Um, I'm starving. Absolutely Hank Marvin. So yeah, but flounders, target achieved. Might come back tomorrow night. Got loads of bait left. Um, might give it another go tomorrow night. Might just tag that on. This is night one. See if I can do a night two. Um, Loving it, absolutely loving it. It's strange because it's really windy. It rains every now and then and it absolutely sheets it down. Um, but it's not cold. It's January and it's not cold. So only got a hoodie and a, and a thin coat on. Look, you can see how much it's been raining. Absolutely soaking wet. Um, but all good. Right, back to it. There are plenty of fish. So, one flounder. In the bucket he goes. Two flounders. Three flounders. In the buckets they go. A weeny little funny coloured one. <laughs> little tiny flounder. And a not so weeny, really dark one. Right, let's get those back and release into the water. Probably going to fish another quarter of an hour 20 minutes and then that's me done I want something to eat I'm quite hungry but yeah it's all good stuff so Callum's had I think four 
Shane Zad 3 and some bass. I've had a couple of little schooly bass earlier on in that stormy wet weather. Um, I've had two and we're still reeling them in as we speak. So it's been a good night. I've enjoyed it. Let's get these back. <laughs> I'm getting absolutely soaking wet. Um, so all that leaves for me to say really is tight lines and happy fishing. I hope to spend some time with you again sometime soon. From me, from here, for now, it's goodbye. Take care and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.